I'm here at HPE Discover in Las Vegas with Andre Franklin. And last year about this time, Nimble was probably one of the most exciting acquisitions that HPE had done in quite a while. And now, uh, a little less than a year after that, there were some announcements in May that Nimble's doing a bunch of new things inside the HPE umbrella. Can you talk about what those are? Yeah, well, we're real excited because we're able to make some claims that I don't think other vendors can make. Uh, one is that we have a store more guarantee. What does that mean, store more? Store more means you literally can store more. For any all flash array, HP guarantees that you can store more of your application data for every terabyte of raw hardware flash. So, uh, and it doesn't matter who the competitor is, uh, we have technology that gives us efficiencies that other platforms don't have. So for any application environment, you're going to be able to squeeze more of that data into a given terabyte of raw flash. So if I have a terabyte of data, does that mean I can store two terabytes, or what does that mean? Well, the, the compression and dedupe are related to the kind of workload. So you can't really say exactly how much, but we're actually saying that we're going to store more, regardless of what that number is. Analogous to a, a, a department store telling everyone, we will beat your best deal. Now, I'm not speaking price here, but for an analogy purposes, we're basically saying we're going to be able to store more regardless of what that data reduction ratio is. We, we will beat their best deal. If so, if it's the, so if the reduction ratio were the same, store more would win? Correct. I mean, people need to understand there's a difference between actually data reduction and effective capacity. Data reduction are technologies that are used to reduce the data. And our, our data reduction technologies, we feel, are as good as any. But there's another element that isn't talked about often, and that's just simply the overhead of the system, period. We start with low overhead, which means there's more storage available to be used for data reduction purposes. So if you start with a lot more, you end with a lot more. And because of that, we find that we typically are 20%, sometimes even more, uh, more capacity, effective capacity than competitive products. And again, this is for the same constraints, same size of flash. That's 20% is impressive. Yeah, that's typical. Sometimes it's going to be less, sometimes it's more, but we've seen a lot better and we don't see a whole lot worse than 20%. So we think it's a, a very bold claim that we are the best there. We challenge anyone there. We challenge customers on that. And we're willing to back it up with free SSDs if we happen to be wrong. That, that seems like a good guarantee. Yeah. So store more, that's one new announcement. What, what else is new? Well, we have arrays that are future-proof for NVMe. And we all know NVMe is the future. In fact, it's the present but it has more of a future in the future, if you will, uh, and storage class memory. So these platforms don't support it today, I need to be very clear, but you don't have to throw away your investment if you buy an array today. They are future-proof, they are designed for NVMe and, and storage class memory. And, and, and may I add here that we think that the big impact to the industry will be the marriage of NVMe and storage class memory. NVMe by itself is fine, it has its advantages, but it's not the, maybe I'll say it like this, it doesn't live up to the hype. There's all this hype about NVMe. We love NVMe. We wouldn't be future-proofing for NVMe if we didn't believe in it. But it is not that order of magnitude leap it's not that really, you know, game-changing kind, paradigm-shifting kind of thing. We feel that when you pair NVMe with storage class memory, there's your real difference in the storage industry, and we're prepared for that with these products. That's also very cool. So, I, I believe there's also some new hardware coming? Absolutely. Uh, some people are aware that our products are actually processor-bound. Now, that sounds like a limitation. But actually it's not, because what it means is that when Intel comes out with new technologies, more cores, uh, faster processor speeds, you actually get a faster storage product. So the limitations that we may have in one product 
are resolved by the next generation of Intel and the next generation of Intel and so on. So as a result, for instance, our all flash arrays, the, the sweet spot of that product line, it's up to 220% more price performance. And as I recall, 100% is double. So 200% is triple. We're talking more than three times the price performance of our previous product line introduced about two years ago. Again, a result of the Intel technology curve that we're able to take advantage of, as well as just storage technologies in general. So we, we feel it's earth-shattering, earth the, the value that we're able to give to customers with this kind of price performance. And there was a fourth announcement that I'm blanking on what it was. Actually, yes. Uh, it's a really significant one because we've added inline variable deduplication to our hybrid arrays. We call them adaptive arrays, probably just because we want to be different. Well, actually, they're at adaptive arrays because they're truly adaptive. Uh, these arrays are for mainstream and general purpose workloads but they're also for secondary storage, backup and DR. We had a secondary flash array previously, but we folded all of that functionality into the current hybrid adaptive array so that we don't need the SFA storage, the secondary flash array product line anymore. So uh, with the inline variable dedu plus compression, it does all of what our previous secondary flash array used to do. Um, and has deep integration with Veeam and works with other backup and DR software. Um, so the, the, the bottom line here is that with the uh, inline variable dedupe, customers are going to get substantially more capacity for the same disks because of the dedupe. And it's always on, never turned off. Um, so customers benefit instantly from this, the capacity savings. And I'm assuming that, uh, that also because you don't need a secondary flash array as well, that there's some potential cost savings there? Well, yes. I mean, uh, if you were going to have one secondary array and one um, hybrid array or, or that kind of thing, you could do it all in one. And the nice thing about the adaptive array, it has the performance for general purpose and mixed workloads, but it has the cost effectiveness of a secondary flash array. And so um, you could run test dev and, uh, applications or test an environment before you deploy it while it's doing backup, while it's doing replication and so on. It has the performance for that. So uh, that's why we call it adaptive. It can adapt to pretty much anything it needs to. And given that Nimble is known for, for InfoSight, I'm assuming all of this is compatible with InfoSight. Absolutely. It's a full uh, implementation of InfoSight with the cross-stack analytics. Um, uh, there's no level one or level two support as a result of InfoSight automating level one and level two. Whenever there's a, a phone call to support, it's answered usually in less than 60 seconds and it goes right to a level three engineer. I mean, there's no more of calling level one and the guy says, uh, well, is it plugged in? Uh, <laughs> do, is, is there smoke coming out? And then you get escalated to the next level. Doesn't happen on Nimble. You go right to somebody who's a real storage engineer and can fix the problem quickly. Which is, which is what people want. Absolutely. All right, thanks, Andre. It's my pleasure.